Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an MSI laptop. This is an MSI 1015B12UC model. The exact model or internal model is an MS-16RA. And in this video I'm going to take you on a step by step how you can tear it down and clean up the heatsink, thermal paste on the CPU, GPU and do your own maintenance and servicing once every year, year and a half depending how heavy you use it. People say how often I should replace it, the thermal paste, I will say once you see the temperatures are going up, replace it, that's when you know how often you use it, depending. So there's not an actual number. This is not a benchmark test, you can put a PTM thermal pads on it if you want to, or you can put a different stuff on it, whichever you like. I will recommend you guys to go with an Arctic MX4 or with the Thermal Grizzly Extreme. These are really, really good to use for here. Uh, you can you don't go don't go with a PTM ones because the reason is if you even put a PTM that it lasts up to five years but even before five years you have to open it up and clean up the heat sink and the fan dusting and stuff like that in order to do that you have to separate the heat sink so by separating the heat sink you have to put again TPM so pretty much you will be servicing every year year and a half because the dust buildup is going to be too much so this thermal grizzly extreme they do last up to three years on, or even four years on the laptop with no problem, no thermal pumping, no issue whatsoever. We have tested them on many, many laptop, high-end laptop with no problem. So we didn't get one of the syringe from this ones and you set to go. But that's up to you which way you want to do. But we use Thermal Grizzly or Arctic MX4 or MX6. All right. Yes. Just remember by doing a servicing, you're not going to change anything in the system. Everything is going to be left the way it was before, so you don't have to back up files or do anything like that. So pretty much all you need to do is to shut it down, make sure it's powered off, and you want to grab yourself tools that I'll be mentioning right now. So I'm going to flip it upside down. Tool number one, a good uh, thermal paste. I recommend don't get any off-brand uh, thermal paste. A good screwdriver set. I recommend that I fix a screwdriver set. I purchased myself this basic tool set. We are going to be using a Phillips number one from this tool set. If you do get the pro set, they will include you with tweezers and some opening tools. If not, grab yourself a guitar pick. A metallic guitar pick are suitable to opening cases and covers. Next, I will recommend you guys to grab the worn sheet of the workshop towel. The reason is people tell me, can I use a microfiber stuff? No, do not use microfiber. Those are horrible. Do not use it, please. The reason is because for the next one is a 98%, 99% isopropylic or isopropylic alcohol. Once you put an alcohol on top of this towel and you try to clean the components, the motherboard or the heatsink, this will rip apart and will prevent damage on the board. But if you use the microfiber towels, they can get tangled on the tiny capacitors and you can damage them. So use this one, please. If you want to use cheaper than that, go with a paper towel if you want to. But those things, they put lots of dust particles and stuff on the board. I don't like that. But this one is pretty clean. And they're cheap to get. So we got this one's on hand. And we need one curved or straight tweezers. If I miss anything else, I'll let you know. A used or new toothbrush. It's good to have to clean the vent and the fan. And I guess that's it. So let's get into it. For On the bottom of the laptop, you're going to see a whole bunch of screws, and the one in the middle has a little paper on it for the warranty. You want to rip that apart and remove the screw too. All the screws are the same size and height, so don't worry about mix matching them. So remove all of them and keep them in a single pile. Also, if you guys like my videos, if you find my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking that like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the comment area. I appreciate that. Just remember another thing. Once you do your survey, but we have to disconnect the battery, stuff like that. Once you disconnect the battery and you power on after servicing, if it doesn't power on, don't panic. Usually you need to plug in the charger first with the charger plugged in, power it on, and it will power on. So I get a lot of people panicking once they don't see the laptop is not turning on. So don't worry about that, All right? And you might do even a few restarts, like a four or five times, it's gonna restart itself, don't worry. It's okay, it's normal. All right, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna stick the opening to, in this case, the guitar pick between the bottom cover and the palm rest. So I'm gonna stick it there, I'm gonna twist it, and you're gonna hear a click sound. Those are the click 
you hear a big click sound, that's fine. That's what you want to hear. You want to work yourself all, in, all around in the front. You want to work towards the audio jack. But once we get towards the audio jack, we see this gap opening like that. You don't want to push any further. Just stay right there, stop right there. And then you want to go to the other side. On this side, we want to work all the way towards the USB port, towards the grill, towards the back corner. Now we're going to work on the back corner. In this part, you want to stick the guitar pick in a 45 degree angle towards the bottom case in here. So you first go straight in and then twist it 45 degree towards the bottom case. And you want to hit and work yourself in a 45 degree angle, just like that, while I'm pulling it towards the ceiling like this, this motion. You see, like that. Once you get to the back corner, now what you want to do, you want to lift it up from the power jack upward like this, a little bit, 45 degree angle. In here, you want to push it towards the audio jack so you can scoop this audio jack plastics right in here. Once you scoop it, you can lift it up. Otherwise, if you don't do that and you lift it from this side, because this will some kind of hook, the hook around the jack, you lift up, you're going to damage the jacks in here and you're going to rip the board out. Take this part out and clean it up with a toothbrush, wash it out, leave it for drying. And down here, we can see the battery, the heat sink, weird heat sink. I don't know why they don't put two fans, only one fan. And CPU right here shares a half pipe, goes over here to a heat sink right there. Another big pipe goes over the VRMs and goes to the back grill right there. We cannot service the fan only without removing the heat sink. So that's what I'm saying. There will be a clogged up dust right in here after one year, two years. So that one will not come out with a blowing air through it. It would just get worse. If you try to blow, you just clog up the fan. You have to open it. Uh, we've seen so many people after one year, they just get a like, big, huge clog of the dust in there. To do anything before we do anything, we're going to disconnect the battery. To disconnect the battery, we want to disconnect it from here. But we don't have enough room to pull this cable back. Or you might have it, but it's risky. So I recommend you to disconnect, to remove the battery. Battery has a little adhesive. To remove the adhesive, you want to put this spatula or something underneath, and you want to lift it up. If it doesn't come out, your, your adhesive is too strong, you can put a little alcohol over these corners in this side and let it drain underneath. Put it there, let the fumes from the alcohol do the job, and you lift it up and it will blend the adhesive. Lift it up like that, and there's the adhesive. Right, and now we have more room to work in here. Just pull this jack backward, pull it on the middle, bring it evenly back, like that. Don't pull it sideways. Put the battery to one side. Now we got the fan system in here, and we have the fan connector right in here. We're going to pull this fan connector upward, grab it by the neck, and wiggle it around, and it will come loose. All right. So that's how you disconnect that one. We're gonna, we don't need to un, unhook this uh, LCD cable, but if you want to, it's safer to do it. Lift up this latch 90 degree upward and pull this flex cable back and untangle it easily so you don't stress it out. Put it to one side. All right. Down here, we're gonna remove a few screws. We're gonna remove one, three screws for the fan that touches the fan. One, two, Three. Remove the three screws. Next, we want to remove three screws for the heat sink and three, four screws for the GPU. There we go. Once you remove those, just grab it by them in the mid somewhere over here and just be gentle with it. Move it around so you want to break that seal. There we go. And it's coming up. Grab it from the middle and bring it up this way. And there we have it. You see these thermal pads in here? This is the one millimeter thermal pads over the components power regulators. If you want to replace them, these are they are all one millimeter thermal pads on the VRAMs, all over the place, they are one millimeters. So you can see that they do use a thermal paste in here. And it does have a thermal pumping on it, so that's fine. There's a GPU 350 RTX and iCore 512 Gen. All right, to clean them out, just grab one sheet of the workshop towel, 
Where's my watch on top? And spray alcohol right over. And now what you want to do, you want to just go back and forward over the CPU. As long as you clean the crystal die on the CPU and GPU, you're fine. Just go on a circular motion in here. Grab a little bit more. You see this one rips apart and it will prevent damaging on the tiny capacitors around the GPU. There we go. Once we clean up the board, now we're gonna clean up the heat sink. Same thing in here. Soak it in a little bit. And put your fingers at the back where you're cleaning it. And just scoop it out. It comes out like a concrete. You see anything, any of them falling down on the board, just lift them up. The thermal paste is not conductive, so don't worry. Now you can do extra step to clean up the heat sink in here. That you need to remove one, two, three, four screws in here. So let's put one sheet of the workshop towel in here. And we're gonna open up the, the fan so we can nicely truly clean the fan inside there. So grab a Phillips zero and remove four screws that touches on top this part. This is the part that you cannot do it with a heat sink uh, connected to the board. So you need to remove the heat sink in order to be able to do this. So once you remove these four screws, you can remove the fan and take it outside and remove any dust build up in here, but this one is pretty clean. Yours might be really, really clogged up. Clean up the fan with a toothbrush and then put it back on. Right here, there's a little gaffer tape he has in the corner in here. That's a little gaffer tape. Once, make sure you clean it up nicely and put it back on. And then put the tiny screws right over. Don't over tighten up these tiny screws. Just reach them and that's it. You don't need to go crazy tightening these ones. There we go. Now all you need to do is to apply the thermal paste. In this case, I'm gonna go with MX4 on the CPU. There are two crystal dies. Just put one line in there. On the GPU, put one nice drop, big drop right in the middle. It's gonna spread around. So don't worry about it. it's too much. So one raindrop, just like that. Picture. Next, what you want to do, you want to grab the heat sink, bring it over. Align it. And let us, once you put it down, do not lift it up again. It's very important to not lift up the heat sink. Now we want to cross screw these screws, force cross screw them on the GPU and then on the CPU, doesn't matter how you start, I'll recommend you guys to start from the bottom corner, uh, closer to the fan in here. So that way the thermal paste evenly spreads over the GPU and CPU. So I'm gonna first put the screws in. Once you're done with that, put the three screws for the fan that you removed. You want to bring the connector, flex connector for the LCD. You want to open up the latch and bring it down inside the connector evenly. Make sure it goes nice and inside the jack without forcing it. And then lock it down. Grab the fan connector, push it down inside the jack all the way in. Grab the battery before you align the battery in here in the box. Put the connector in front of the jack and then push it in straight in. And then grab it and set it down and make sure it goes in, in here. Next, double check, everything is in place. Fan connector cable, 
heat sink. Grab this side in 45 degree angle, the audio port. Scoop it right underneath, just like that. All right. And then you want to bring it down and you want to push down the front end, the back. You want to hear those nice big click sounds. That's what you want to hear. Those are the clips are getting locked in. In the back end, you can pinch them, push down and pinch, push down and pinch. So you don't you lock those clips in. And to finish it off is to put the bottom screws right all over the place. And I'm gonna power on so you guys can see it. Make sure you power on with the charger plugged in. Also, if you guys like this video and it helps you guys out to do your own service and cleaning for your MSI laptop, you can support the channel by clicking that like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. Just gonna finish up putting up the bottom screws and we're gonna power it on. So let's go ahead and grab the charger. We are gonna power it on. It might flicker a few times, that's fine. Don't worry about it. The backlight comes in, the screen comes in, and it's loading to the window with no problem. And that's it for today's video. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching.